A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, watching this episode of Just Talk. Today, the topic for the today's discussion or talk is life of a lawyer in litigation, and the eminent guest speaker for this episode is none other than Mr. Abhishek Gai, managing associate at L and L Partners, formerly known as Luthra and Luthra Partners. As a managing associate at L and L Partners, Sir advises and represents clients on a wide range of issues with a strong focus on international commercial arbitration, corporate criminal liability, money laundering cases, etc. Sir has done his graduation from Punjab University in 2012 and practiced as a litigator for seven years before various courts, including Supreme Court of India, Delhi High Court, National Company Law Tribunal, and trial courts. He has represented the central government for nearly three years in high-value matters, including white-collar crime, policy and enforcement matters, etc. This was a short introduction about Sir. Let's begin with the discussion and stay tuned for us and watch this video till last. Over to you, Sir. Hi, guys. Uh, so, for the benefit of all, I'll just elaborate on what I've been doing in the last, you know, eight years or so. So uh, I graduated around 2012 from Punjab University. I don't specially come from a family of lawyers, although my sister is one. But I, through my internships, I've been through chambers of high court and I've interacted with councils. And from the very beginning, you know, once I was about to graduate, my the understanding of law that I had was, uh, I mean, I had just a stint of two up internships uh, in uh, law firms. And I was under the impression that, so at the very beginning, that uh, a top tier law firm is not a good place for me to start. My understanding of this uh, came from the internships as well as a bit of uh, interaction that I've had with lawyers. So uh, I always wanted to start from the bottom chain, which is trial courts. And fortunately enough, uh, on my sister's recommendation, I joined a, you know my first senior, who was Pramod Kumar Singh. Uh, he had a boutique law firm in South Delhi and where he did a lot of IPR and civil matters. Uh, this is essentially my first exposure to law. Uh, th this invariably took me three, four years to get a hold of what, you know, ground level looked like or uh, how to go about things. And uh, he, he was such a kind person that from the very first date and rightly so, he uh, pointed me towards the direction of the court clerk and he said, you know, you follow him around for uh, at least two, three weeks to understand how this works. And this is very important. I mean, you need for, if, if somebody, if you, or for a matter of fact, somebody else wants to, you know, join litigation, a litigation lawyer is a one man army of sorts. So he needs to know how everything works from filing, from looking at the defects, from getting things listed. So essentially a client comes to you at the very first instance, he would want you to do something on an urgent basis because that's, you know, how lawyers work. Our, our job is to get it done as quickly as possible because we are usually approached at the very last minute. So, uh, so I followed the clerk around for a couple of weeks trying to understand how filing is done, how, how, you know, what is important and what is not important. Um, from the very first instance, I, I remember doing one big blunder was that I came across a judgment, which is a certified copy of a judgment. And I, I saw that, uh, that judgment had clerical errors. So I was naive at that given point of time. So I thought, why not? correct the, that error. So I applied a widener on a certified copy of the judgment and corrected whatever error there was. And my senior gave me a very blatant stare and he was like, what the hell did you do? And it, it's not something that you should have done. So, I mean, these are learning sort of curves that you come across every day. But uh, essentially what I would say is you need to decide your priorities before you, you know, start practicing or switch to litigation. Uh, there are essentially, to my mind, three, four types of things that you can try off. So like for an aspiring graduate, if you are finan financially sound off, um, essentially what I would suggest is you try uh, joining at the basic level because in litigation, trial courts are the best place to start because you would need to understand the complexities of the judicial process, how things work. Having a theoretical knowledge is good enough, but it is not sufficient. I mean, it's, it's like 
theoretical knowledge is essentially 30 40% of what a lawyer does it's how you channelize how you materialize that theoretical knowledge that's uh, defines a lawyer i mean you would know 100% about something right but if you're not able to channelize it in front of a judge you wouldn't be able to succeed in your case or present your case successfully so that's essentially something you need to look for while starting uh, you know at the very first year i mean many of you have done a lot of internships so you probably would have an idea of how litigation works in a law firm or probably how litigation works at trial courts but my funda has always been that you start at the bottom and this this has always worked for me i'm not saying that's the universal thing that will also work for you i mean there are people who are happy starting things at high court level or supreme court level for that matter but according to me you need to understand how things start how something is presented at the court of first instance how it travels i mean you need to know what's right and wrong in a brief before it reaches you at a appellate stage so if you know all these things you'll be able to pinpoint things better even if at your if even if you're at a high court level or a supreme court level so if if you're well off i would suggest uh, financially that is i would suggest that you try your hand with uh, you know some trial court lawyer who essentially you know, trial court lawyers have essentially a lot of work but uh, they they are not able to pay their juniors well because they, they they don't receive that good or hefty amount of money from their clients so uh, that's one place to start if you are not uh, financially well off and you still want to learn i would suggest that you i mean there are certain lawyers even trial court lawyers or uh, tier 2 law firms which have a lot of litigation i mean i mean even they pay decently well also so that you are able to sustain yourself in a city and uh, at the same time learn what you need to find in these tier 2 law firms or even for a trial court lawyer is somebody who handles his matters very well uh, i mean so there are different sort of practitioners out there one is like who are happy to teach their juniors but after a while i mean it's understandable also people just you can say satya jaate na log so after a while they they don't want to interact with juniors because they're tired of telling them what to do and every day there is a i wouldn't say precisely i could have i mean for the lack of a better word uh, law law colleges are churning out stupid uh, graduates who are essentially you know doing law just for the fun of it and they want to uh, go ahead learn something maybe not learn something but join some uh, council and probably it becomes an irritation for them so that's why they are probably not happy teaching juniors at that level but uh, essentially there are certain amount of people who will be happy to tell you more uh about uh, how to go about things and uh, in my initial year my uh, so my first boss was a very very humble sort of a person i mean he sort of appreciated what i needed to do in life and he always told me that why are you pushing yourself too hard at this given age uh, and this was second year of my practice and he was like you should go home early instead of staying late in the office but uh, for Like, like for my benefit uh, i i like working alone when there's nobody else in the office so it gives me a peace of mind so i used to work late uh but that i mean he he got up sort of gave me good exposure of trial courts i was in and out of all the trial courts in delhi i appeared uh, in consumer matters and i sort of was you know got the best thrill of my life when i first uh, succeeded in my first consumer matter so uh, after succeeding there it was a make my trip short matter you know court decided in our favor so i was very happy and then i sort of realized this is part and parcel of life now i mean this is going to go on i am going to come across matters that i would need to succeed in or maybe lose in so one thing that my boss told me that you know as fresh graduates or as aspiring lawyers we we always look forward to winning matters but uh, a lawyer's job or a lawyer's career is not about winning matters always you come across matters where you lose uh i mean you may, might have a good case you might be so, so enthusiastic about your matter but eventually the court doesn't rule in your favor so those are the times when you need to pick yourself up is something that he taught me that you know you'll come across cases where you know you put your heart and soul out and the court doesn't decide in your favor so if after losing that matter you need to put yourself up 
and then move on from those things because these things sort of happens in a lawyer's career so that's something that i still remember i mean, after so many years uh, so essentially practicing for four years in trial courts uh, doing a bit of corporate matters as well uh, doing a bit a lot of ipr civil matters i came to join uh, mr uh, now justice uh, sanjeev narula he is now an aspiring judge of the delhi high court so he at that given point of time was a standing counsel for union of india and subsequently indirect taxation as well so i i wouldn't say that that was essentially it but i think that was sort of the golden years of my life because uh when you start uh, when i started at trial court level i sort of felt stagnation after 3 4 years because i knew a bit of civil and i was like that's it i needed to try something else so when i joined his uh, chamber or his office for that matter so that was a different sort of exposure because he was a standing counsel in the high court there were a lot of writ matters there uh, you know constitutional challenges something you look forward to when you're studying like when you come across constitution in probably third or fourth year uh, for five year students uh, you, you you would want to try those case of nanda bharatis and you would want to have those constitutional challenges under your belt you want to try your hand in those so that's an opportunity that i got in his office because uh, if you are a counsel for union of india or on the government side you get a lot of constitutional challenges where a provision is challenged uh, you know for a violation of fundamental rights and other things so uh, the thing about and i'll tell you more about uh, office of standing counsel usually uh, office of standing counsel is filled with work i mean when i say filled with work is uh, essentially you get from 5 to 7 matters to 20 matters in a day so my routine in a standing counsel's office was like you know getting up in the morning going to court from 10:30 to 6:30 i was in the high court from 6:30 till probably 10:30 11:30 12 we used to prepare for the matters of the next day i mean we we didn't have enough time to prepare all these matters so we used to take our files to court so let's say for example if you have 10 matters you have to wait like 2 3 hours in between to you know for your next matter to come you can probably go through the files for the next day discuss matters because paucity of time is something that is regular in a standing counsel office so there are certain standing counsels which would you know give you some you, you get a lot of quality work i mean government work is a lot of quality work because from the opposite side you get huge law firms who have invested a lot of uh, resources in their matters and from this side you have a standing counsel and probably two three juniors working on a matter so so it, it gives you a great exposure i mean that's the best exposure that i've ever had uh, you know uh, knowing matters doing matters appearing in matters because what you need to learn and this is something that some people grasp early some people grasp late is to know what is the bottom line in a matter you need to go through a brief and understand that these are the questions that the, the judge is going to ask these are the point of contentions and these points are my weak points so i need to work on them so that's essentially what a brief tells you and the sooner you get used to it the better you will be because uh, i mean it goes across i mean it's not that uh, if you're doing matters of a particular subset you will get to know about those matters only it's when you interact with the judge you in you i mean so i mean i love to in between my matters in the high court during that time i would sit in the court room all day because each matter which is argued by one party and defended by other party and the question the judge poses gives you a lot of information about how uh, you know matters work how judges work how counsels work so it sort of gives you understanding of how the whole process works i mean that's where you enter the mainstream so you need to understand as you presented a file ki ab isme kya karna hai i mean mujhe so essentially all you have in a matter you have three four points that you would want to argue essentially that's your basic points you need to be able to identify those points and you need to be able to argue look for you know case laws research on it and prepare them so that's something that the sooner you learn the better you will be i mean procedure is good i mean you need to learn cpc you need to learn crpc which way you would want to go but these things these knowing what a judge would want to know these knowing the basic fundamental points 
of a brief is something you will probably get an experience i mean you can get this from your internships i mean some some folks are very quick so i've seen a few interns in my office and like in luthra and luthra only which like those guys are just smart enough to grasp it at the very early i mean i, I wasn't the smart one so i i learned it like after around 3 4 years into my practice but it it gets to you i mean it comes to you uh, when you you're doing this on a regular basis so you would know how to think on your feet you would know what to say when a question is asked how to i mean you always don't have the answers to questions that's the, that's the interesting part so you prepare a brief you go to the court and you're like ye acha ye ye sawal aayenge and i'll probably be able to answer that then suddenly the judge stumps you with a question that you did not expect now what to do then so that that's how you know court craft works so that's something that you need to pick up while you're litigating while you're practicing in the court and you need to find a good senior who will teach you all this i mean there are, i mean seniors there are a couple of seniors who are very good litigators but they're not good seniors i mean they won't teach you all these things like bithake nahi sikhayenge so if you are energetic if you are willing to learn you'll probably learn to live with it i mean you can look at your senior and grasp ki acha ye hota to ye ho jata so these things that these things you pick up when you work with your senior so uh, essentially that's something one should keep in mind while uh, opting for litigation so like i said once if you're well off join some trial court lawyer if you're not well off find somebody who pays you well and has good work or maybe a tier 2 law firm because uh, the downside and i still feel that uh, it was something that i figured out in my internship of a tier 1 law firm is that if you start from the very beginning like after first year of your up, like first year of your practice you want to join a tier 1 law firm a tier 1 law firm might not be able to give you that much exposure when it comes to trial court work and i i say this from the limited experience i have i mean there may be uh, a lot of uh, teams or firms out there who are able to give you this exposure but i am i'm quite certain that they will not be able to give you a that exposure which a trial court lawyer or a, you know a grassroots level lawyer will be able to give because uh, in in top tier law firms you have clerks doing your work you don't know in in and outs of uh, how something is to be filed how is something going to get listed before what court how how do you how who is a nazir who is a reader i mean these things uh, these things will not be taught to you in a law, top tier law firm top tier law firm you'll be doing the chunk, chunk of the work like cream work you'll be doing you'll be drafting things which will be worked upon by probably six other people so you might start working on a draft as as a associate and when the draft ultimately turns out uh, you might not find that even a single line written by you exists in the, in that draft so so it goes through a multiple level of review processes so um, for somebody that may be okay but it wasn't okay for me at that given point of time because uh, uh, mind my language you need to know your shit before you uh, you go out there and say ki yes you know i i belong here uh, so so these are three sort of things which you can try i mean essentially uh, the only reason that i had to let go of my ex boss which was uh, justice sanjeev narula is because he got elevated otherwise i think that sort of was the perfect job i mean i i, I got to a pure because he had a lot like chunk of matters like 10 12 matters every day you appear in court judges know you judges recognize you so one thing you'll also find is that you you probably go in court and say you know सीनियर को देख के तो जज इज गिविंग यू नो लीव ए जज इज पासिंग ऑर्डर इन इज फेवर इट्स नॉट जस्ट टू द सीनियर सो एसेंशली वट द सिचुएशन इज वेन यू गो टू कोर्ट एन यू अपेयर एवरी डे यू अपेयर इन यूर मैटर्स यू प्रेजेंट आर्ग्यूमेंट्स सो जज सॉर्ट ऑफ रिकोगनाइज यू सो यू नो योर रेपुटेशन स्टार्ट टू बिल्ड अप विद अ जज यू प्रेजेंटिंग योर सेल्फ एवरी डे इन कोर्ट आर्ग्यूंग मैटर्स judge knows your argument how how your case is what sort of clients do you represent and how you present yourself in court so they know they once they start knowing you they'll start trusting you more because for somebody like like let's say for example you are a judge and you're sitting in in your courtroom and there's a matter called 
and a rookie judge comes uh, a rookie sorry counsel comes up and you know starts arguing x y z you'll be a lot skeptical and be like ki what is he seeing saying i need to confirm this before i trust him but then again simultaneously look, you look at a counsel who appears regularly in your court who you know is a nice person who you know represents his client well who you know is a knowledgeable fellow so you would trust him more than you would trust uh, that uh, rookie counsel right so that that's how you build up your trust in in a court of law and that's sort of why judges start to give you benefit of the doubt it's it's not that seniors get leeway it's just that judges trust them a little more when they say things so it's it's something you can also build up if you let's say for example you appear in a court regularly i mean you'll probably notice that judge will start recognizing you you know you're that fellow who argued that matter in front of me so i know you i can trust your word for it so that's i mean judge judge judges are a little concerned about somebody trying to fool them somebody trying to get away with something i mean we all are i mean you are sitting as a judge uh, and you have to pass orders judicial orders you will be scrutinized on those orders you wouldn't want to write something which makes you look stupid right so so that is make sure that you know whatever is being told to them is the correct position and once they know that this is the correct position they'll probably trust you a little more so that's one way to look at it so uh, uh, further if you go so i mean the exposure that i got in the office of standing counsel was like immense i i mean doing 10 or like let's say 8 to 10 matters every day is is sort of you know, it gives you idea it gives you a flavor of uh, who you are how court is and it it sort of i mean it it gave me the ability to understand how briefs work how courts work how litigation works and mind you it was after 4 years of practicing in trial courts so it really, it really doesn't matter when you get it but you have to get it i mean you have to get to understand how briefs work how courts work for you be able to service your clients better so i i gave you third picture so third is like tier 1 law firm so you can join tier 1 law firms uh but essentially as i told you they might not be able to give you that much of an exposure i mean they pay handsomely if you find a good team they might just teach you a lot of things because uh so there are two sort sort of uh, councils in tier 1 law firms one is a council who's at like at one given point of time was a litigator who used to independently practice but now is no longer one so somebody who has been in litigation might be able to give you that flavor but somebody who's not litigated as a trial court lawyer might not understand complexities of court will not be able to give you that exposure i mean there are people who from the very first day joined a law firm like a tier 1 law firm and have been there and like forever so they might not be able to give you that flavor which you would need to understand or they might be able to i mean i can't say it like in a universal rule i can speak from experience I, and i think um, for a counsel who wants to start litigation you need to start at the basics you need to understand uh i mean if if you are want to run up after money i mean even if you are you know not financially well off i would say that don't run after money run after knowledge or uh, try and get as much experience as you can but like har koi kaam chota bada nahi hota i mean you're not there yet for the initial 5 to 10 years consider yourself as good as a munshi theek hai because they for the first few years they'll probably know more than you do and that's a fact and you need to give them that benefit of doubt so you need to humble yourself uh, you need to you know do whatever work comes across your table i mean there are days when you know the work that your boss gives you might frustrate you to your core just bow your head down just do your little work i mean it, it it's okay uh, till you attain that level where your boss or somebody in your field recognizes you and says ki ha isko pata hai tab tak you should bow your head down and continue to work so that's something you should look forward to uh, essentially i think i uh, you know even if when i was enjoying my time in the standing counsel's office and i i got a lot of experience uh, like agar aaj das matter lagenge so my boss was not able to attend all of those matters so there were times uh, when 
I was arguing matters for the union uh, independently. So, like, कुछ कुछ time तो ऐसा भी होता था when you enter into a, into the court, your matter is called. आप खड़े हो जज के सामने. Opposite side has argued, and the judge asks you, yes, Mr. Counsel, what's your position? And I was looking at the dice. Even my file was not there because my clerk was too busy keeping the files here and there. So, so there are there were times when I argued matter without a file. There were times when I argued matter. you know after taking file from the opposite council and i like please let me just have a look at least so so these were the interesting exposures that i got i mean uh, not to brag but i i got the opportunities to argue against the likes of uh, independently against the likes of mr jitambaram uh, mr sandeep sethi and other you know prestigious senior councils so so this is something that you get probably in a standing council office um uh, i i'm i'm saying this because that's all i know i mean i wouldn't be able to tell you how a trial court ka at that particular stage trial courts i mean there are uh, criminal lawyers who get to uh, experience more uh, but since i wasn't there i might not be the correct person to tell you all this so uh, what i would suggest is you know it took me 7 years to take a call that i should now jump on to a little more comfortable life probably in a tier 1 law firm uh it might take you a little less time it might take you a little more but my suggestion would always be that uh, don't start from there uh start from the ground build yourself up make yourself uh and a good enough asset for you to join a law firm a good law firm where you will be able to add value you know to your drafts i mean aisa nahi hona chahiye na ki aap so essentially i i'll tell you what happens is uh, when associates are presented with some work koi bhi aap kisi firm mein aap associate ko kaam de do the first thing that look forward to is ki uh, you know sir please koi similar draft de dijiye because i would know what to write and what not to write so uh, this is something that you get in trial court exposure or maybe high court exposure तुम्हें क्या लिखना है एक ड्राफ्ट में और क्या नहीं लिखना है ड्राफ्ट में दैट यू विल गेट टू नो वंस यू एक्सपीरियंस इट सेल्फ एक्सपीरियंस इट इन कोर्ट लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल यू रोड समथिंग इन अ पर्टिकुलर ड्राफ्ट एंड व्हेन यू नो यू आर देयर इन द कोर्ट टू डिफेंड दैट ड्राफ्ट इज वेन यू रियलाइज की अरे ये नहीं लिखना चाहिए था ये लिखना चाहिए था सो 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 दैट समथिंग दैट यू एक्सपीरियंस इन कोर्ट सो and 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 if you can hear my little pup barking in the background so that's that's part and parcel of living at home and i can't probably teach him not to bark so um that's essentially it um, i'll be happy to answer any questions i used that you may have yes sir yes sir sir uh, many of the viewers want to ask what is the basic difference between a tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 law firms so essentially tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 may yeah uh, tier 3 is essentially let's say for example you and i decide ki chalo ek law firm khol lete hain so uh, tier 3 is as close as you get to a litigation practitioner because you have you can have small clients you can have a little bigger clients so it it's it's like somebody who has recently started work uh, might not have that good amount of work or might not have that good amount of experience might not have that good amount of infrastructure so it, it it's like tier 3 to aap keh sakte is a startup yeah you've started up and um, uh, so that's a good exposure that's a good place to start might not be able to pay you that well but make shift kaam hota hai chalta hai sab badhiya and they do their best that's a tier 3 tier 2 would be something that's more established like somewhere between tier 1 and tier 3 like somebody who has good experience able to provide you good infrastructure i mean like for a tier 3 law firm like somebody like teen five three or five years of experience guy would be your partner or somebody maybe who's higher but might not be able to sustain that litigation practice that well in a tier 2 law firm you'll have like good amount of partners you'll have good infrastructure some guidance so essentially tier 1 mein uh, tier 3 mein tum expect kar sakte ho that you as an associate are dealing with your partner directly maybe in a tier 2 firm you have a channel in between i mean i mean there is a senior 
you know before a super senior so infrastructure quality of work decides if you are a tier 2 i mean essentially aajkal to it's it's all about size if you're smaller in size like very small you're probably a tier 3 if you are a little bigger like let's say 30 to 40 people maybe you're a tier 2 and if you go beyond 50 people yes you're a tier 1 that's i mean a tier 1 gets the milk i mean gets the cream a uh, good amount of work good clientele churning out good money like agar if you are essentially let's say on a corporate side on a or on a litigation side if your name appears in big matters yes essentially you've been given the uh, the uh, title of tier 1 if you are earning good revenue yes you've been given the title of tier 1 if you are earning you know if you are if you have large team like 300 400 people yes tier 1 but just as just your level will increase so will be your i would say importance i mean there 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 is a chain of command like for a tier 3 it will be directly to your boss for a tier 2 will be one step or maybe two step directly to your partner for a tier 3 law firm there will be multiple steps like you have associates then you have senior associates then you have managing associates then you have partner then you have senior partner tier 2 may the possibly will be like to associate hold then there will be a partner over you and then there is a senior partner so it it's sort of infrastructure kind of matters that you're doing a mix of a lot of things essentially sir uh, can a tier 1 law firm be restricted to only single high court or it must have to be practiced in like a, a, the firm has to be appear in the supreme court or icj or any other international tribunal yeah, essentially uh, so tier 1s are supposed to be all service law firms like tum unke paas le jao kuch bhi and they'll have an answer to it i mean they would not have to look elsewhere to find new solutions so uh, a tier 1 essentially would have somebody appearing in the high court supreme court before the tribunals they'll be representing you before the ministries they'll do everything for you so it's like a one stop shop so one more question from the audience why you have chosen law as a career so my my choice of law as a career was you know it, it was not, not there wasn't much thought after it i mean like it it sort of transpired i mean it wasn't that bad ki aisi situation mein nahi thi ki i wasn't good for anything else so i decided to choose law which was and essentially you know initially like if you go a generation back so that's probably the case i mean th- there is this perception in uh, probably your parents mind or somebody who is a little younger than that ki jisko kuch nahi aata hota to wo wakalat kar leta so like jisse ias nahi clear hui you know ips nahi ban paya to usne essentially side by side by side law kar liya but with the emergence of five years uh, courses law has become a professional sort of a situation now i mean the exposure that we get nowadays i mean like international commercial arbitrations are there i mean if you ask lawyers going back 10 to 20 years they wouldn't know what an inter- international commercial arbitration would look like how to represent yourself so uh, so these are the sort of things that wasn't there at that given point of time i mean my sister was doing law so i thought you know why sh- why don't i try my hand there and see if i succeed i mean i i admit i'm i might be well off doing something in the tech world because i'm sort of a techy myself but uh, this is something that i essentially i mean i had a few choices but this is some something that i landed on i can't probably say why i landed on this uh, because uh, so it, 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 being a litigation lawyer or being a lawyer is not everybody's cup of tea i mean you you might not uh, like it you might not be able to do it uh, it's something that you acquire when you go through it like litigation tumhe pasand hai tum what do you want to be you want to be a corporate lawyer you want to be a briefing counsel you want you like arguing matters so these these are the things that you acquire and uh, essentially i don't think anybody is born for it uh, so 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 that's something that sort of influenced my decision at that given point of time ki i mean i thought you know it seemed like a good place to start so that's why i think i i joined uh, a law school and you know got okay, involved sir. in litigation moving on to last question 
सर एज यू वर इंडिपेंडेंटली लिटिगेटिंग एंड यू हैव रिसेंटली ज्वाइंड फ्यू इयर्स अगो एल एन एल पार्टनर सो सर वॉट विल बी द बेस्ट एज वन शुड गो फॉर इंडिपेंडेंट लिटिगेटिंग और वन शुड गो फॉर लॉ फॉर्म्स so i i think i answered your question sufficiently in my whole uh, uh, talk um, i think uh, according to me the best place to start would be uh, as a litigator uh, join a trial court lawyer uh, maybe get a few years of uh, you know uh, court ke dhakke under your belt before you think about a law firm but if you can find a law firm which offers you all this at the very beginning i think that's probably the best i mean it'll give you a safe uh environment because uh, you know uh, the visa versa is not possible like if you join a law firm they'll pay you handsomely all right they'll give you all those perks which you won't imagine are there for a lawyer and once you start getting those perks you probably wouldn't look back and say ki yaar ab like you know 10000 ki naukri kon karega iske baad so so the, it's really hard for you to go back once you start at a comfortable position so it's best to start conservative jitna kam ho sake utne mein start karo so that you know so essentially one thing that i i i was of the opinion initially also and i believe that that to be true also is that the place that has the best amount of work largest amount of work will not pay you that well so that's a litigator's office like a trial court's lawyer office he might have good work but he might not be able to pay you that well but uh, like a place like a law firm they might pay you that well but they might not be able to give you that much of an exposure which a trial court lawyer will be able to give you so i i would suggest you start with the litigating lawyer and after a few years if you think that you've learned the basic traits of how court craft works how procedure works how um, you know uh, pleadings work then you can probably shift to a law firm because then you will be appreciated more and you will be able to add value and that's that's basic that's basic something that that's going to stick with you for the rest of your life i mean you'll you'll be in a position to tell other people things that they don't already know because they don't have that sort of exposure and that's going to be good for you in, in, even in the long run okay thank you so much sir for such a wonderful session with us thank you for accepting our proposal and joining us with this talk show and thank you so much for audience for watching this video hope this will help you and clear your doubts about a top tier firms and working as a lawyer independent litigator or working in a law firm hope this will will be helpful for you in the upcoming episode we will be talking about the challenges and advantages of working in a top tier law firm from the behalf of whole just for us team i ayush pandey welcomes and thank you so much sir for accepting our proposal thank, thank you so much i'm glad you to reach out okay thank you so much sir for providing this opportunity to thank you